Hey there, everyone. How are you all doing today? I hope you are well. Thank you so much for joining me for episode number 49 of Let's Play Eternal Eyes on the PlayStation 1. In our last episode, we made it through the seventh floor, and holy cow, you guys, did we get the weirdest set of drops. Now, I will say I was quite pleased with the fact that we had a lot of foes on the battlefield, so it made it a lengthier fight, but a bit more of a rewarding one, and I think more worth our time, but I don't know. Maybe someone will disagree and they prefer the smaller fights that have only four or five enemies. Anyhow, I digress. So we ended up getting quite a few treasure chests and look at our magical puppet list, you guys. We got not just one at the end of that last fight, but two base dolls that I, I don't know. Should I take the time off camera and try to form another third team? Is it just to the point where it's not really worth my time to entertain this idea? I don't know, but I feel like I'm having a bit of a doll dilemma, if you will, where I don't know what to do with all of these magical puppets, but it's, it's triggering me because I kind of want to see what else we could get, but at the same time, I don't care that much. So anyway, we got those dolls as well as a few new pieces of armor and weaponry. We got glamorous armor, which I did not consider an upgrade for Luke, and we also got a sniper, which I'm guessing is just a gun? but maybe it'll play like an actual bow. I'm not sure how they're gonna animate that, but I didn't equip it, so we're not going to see. I just didn't think it was an improvement, which seems to be a theme now with some of the things we've been getting. I don't think I've upgraded any of our puppets ornaments either for a while, so uh, maybe the eighth floor will have something we're looking for. I'm not too sure, but let's go ahead and just dive right in and see what awaits us. Now, I was kind of musing with you guys at the end of episode 48 that I feel we should be nigh to a cutscene, right? It can't be that we're just going to have an endless series of, of fights and dungeon crawling. It's just been so, I think, long for us to be doing this, but I don't know. It looks like this is not the floor where that will be realized. So, okay, we've got three of these douchebags over here, plus two more plus one more over there. Okay, so this doesn't look like it's gonna be that bad. And the map's fairly open, which I appreciate. I don't like it too much when there's a whole lot of depth to the elevation and, and variety with the elevations present. It just makes it kind of messy and clunky to get through. But this fella is called a general, and he's got Jijia. Not bad at all. As long as that healing crap isn't present, I'm a pretty happy camper. So let's see what we can do. I don't know if it's to my advantage to kill this one or for everyone to try to make their way to the one to the very far left. But we're gonna just get started and see how it goes. Oh my god, that, that damage. Luke, he's just such a heavy hitter, y'all. But yeah, we're not gonna be able to get quite there with Olivier because it would be a fucking rat for this guy. But you guys already know, we've got a nice little pool of spells here where we're able to hit people in a fairly large grid. So it's not too bad. I feel like we can get through this fight in no time. So we might be looking at another episode with two fights squeezed into one. I'd kind of appreciate it though if our next fight did have something good and delicious to it in the form of us finding Lolita. I'm ready to wipe the floor with her anyway. She's kind of been a little disrespectful for too long and I can't have her talking all this shit for the whole game and not take an ass whooping. I just can't have it. Nope. Not today, Satan. And then it's all you, Harash. I'm worried about having him get too close so we'll just be a bitch and hang behind Luke. And if I can... I don't know if I quite have... I really wish I could bring up Harash's temp. Because I think that would be very wonderful, personally. But, yeah, that's not going to quite... But I don't know if Harash has anything bigger than Bashama. We can try... I don't know. I don't think there's anything that's going to do more than that. So we might just have to take it and not be too ridiculous in our expectations about what it is. Miss Cutter, that's not gonna work either. All right, friends, it looks like we will then have to stick with the tried and the true, Bushama, 
doing the work that I needed to. And it does a, a decent amount of damage. I just wish I could get the guy that's kind of hanging out over there, but it works out. We're going to kill one. If we're lucky, maybe the second guy will die too, but no. Not quite. But all right, let's hand it over to them and... In a sense, hand it over to you guys. How are you all doing? I hope you are well. I hope you are excited about the new year that will be coming very soon. Holy crap. I kind of talked about this towards the beginning of this recording session and this batch of videos that I'm hunkering down to power my way through. Now, I feel like 2018 just flew on by. And I know that's such a common thing for people to say, like, oh, my God, I can't believe 19... 94 went by so fast you know I get it that just in general as people I feel I've heard the expression and I think this is very true where it's like how does it go I think the days are long but the years are short or something like that and you guys it's just so accurate where it truly does sometimes feel like each individual day you kind of dread maybe tasks that are at hand and things that are expected of you and it just feels like how am I ever going to get through even this week I guess you could even say the days and or the weeks are long when you kind of if you're like me and you're a planner and you sort of anticipate either positively or negatively things to come it makes you sort of just have this constant level of dread just welled up inside of you and you're not really looking forward to anything and each day kind of feels like a drudgery so you know in that sense there's a whole lot of truth to that where you know Monday sucks and then you're like oh god but I know Wednesday I've got this big batch of bullshit going on that I don't want to deal with either etc cetera, etc cetera. so it just fucking sucks but then you look back and you're like holy crap it's already July or it's already December. Like, I remember fucking hating whatever it was that you weren't looking forward to. And then now all of a sudden you're doing something different. Or the thing that bothered you in the past, like, no longer is a big deal at all. Or something you even think about too frequently. So it's just fascinating how heavily individual days. And again, like I said, the argument can be made that even weeks, if you kind of are a planner and you look ahead at things to come it's crazy how long and sometimes tedious that span of time can feel but then when you weigh it against the whole year or against a set of several months it just feels like you basically blinked and it's all gone so something to just think about I remember hearing that expression and thinking like holy shit that is some serious truth that I hadn't really heard before I don't know maybe it's a popular expression and you guys are like Robert really that's the first time you heard that that days are long and years are short or however you know it's fancily said but yeah I think that was the first time recently that I'd seen someone say that or heard someone say that and it just makes so much sense my mind <laughs> was a little blown maybe unnecessarily so but it was nonetheless so I think to be more specific, and I guess to just bring it back to what I was saying and the point of me even bringing up that expression is that the year truly flew by for me in particular with everything that was going on. And it was a stressful, uh, we'll just use blackness, why not? It was a stressful year for me, I would say. Not as emotionally stressful and jarring as the year before when my dad passed but it was still I would say the year was hard it maybe I don't know if stressful is really the right word there was just a lot to do so the year was very daunting perhaps is the right way of describing it where there were just so many things to clean up and just so much still left to kind of recover from and reflect on it just made it made things more difficult so than I think the year would have otherwise been I mean naturally with everything that was left over from 2017 specifically so I don't know I wouldn't describe 2018 as a bad year but looking back on it it wasn't it wasn't a good year so I guess you could say it was neutral there's definitely room to go up and there's room for things to kind of start more fresh and to feel better but, you know, there's always room for <laughs> more trash and for things to get progressively worse. So I'm trying to look at it as there were so many things to be thankful for. And I think it's important to reflect on those moments that were positive and those learning opportunities that did exist. 
but to also be aware that there were things that could be better, whether in your control or out of your control. Still, what could be different and what are some things that maybe I could do to set 2019 up to be calmer or not even really more successful, but maybe just better, (laughs) just better. I think it's the way to sort of look at it. But, you know, who knows? I'm open to whatever 2019 is going to bring. I think it's going to be an exciting year with all the differences that are going to be thrown my way. But I don't know if those differences are going to necessarily be good or if they're going to be chaotic neutral and great, more shitty glamorous armor. But we'll just see. I ho- Oh my God, they're really pushing this fabulous armor, aren't they? And a yellow bee jewel, which is more of what I was hoping for. A blue bee jewel. And a green W jewel. Oh, we've got another chest over here. And a long horn. Hey, now that's got me excited. A new horn, friends. That could be... Now that could be a good one. That might be something that can replace one of the other horns we've got. I think we've got a pointy horn and an ice horn on Lafern and Harash. Let's start with Lafern actually this time. What did we get? Longhorn. This brings up attack, defense, and speed. So this is not appropriate for you. But what about Harash? The ice horn is kind of old news. Ooh, it does bring up defense, but it does come at the cost of that magic defense. But I'm wondering, this isn't bad, you guys. Attack goes up a little bit. You know, that 30 points is pretty good. This is what I was waiting for. And speed does go up. So you actually know who I want to kind of check this out on. Olivier, you've got Dragon Claws, which, terrific. Now, this is going to drop his HP by 50 and his hit rate goes down by 20. But we do see attack become even more insane. Speed becomes more intense. I actually almost feel like this is, this is what I want, but I don't know. I guess if you're okay with your hit rate dropping by 25 points and speed going up by 20, this would be a very neutral replacement. Giving him the Longhorn for this. I think that's okay. But at the same time, I wonder if the Dragon Claws would be better. I don't know, you guys. That's the question. Do I really? Do I really? It looks like this is an increase to the Magma Horn. Like the Magma Horn is the basic ass bitch version of this. Well, you know, Fist of Rage, I guess you could say it's not terrible either to replace Dragon Claws. Why did I not really notice that before? I think I didn't want to tank his HP so much, but the speed increase could be justified, so maybe the Dragon Claws could go. The Sunset Sukan or Suan brings a lot of versatility. I think in what it brings up. Oh my God, you guys, I hate making these sorts of decisions. Okay, why don't we, because actually looking at it, if you're okay without the extra boost to defense, you could go with the, the Fist of Rage instead of the Longhorn. And the Fist of Rage makes you even faster. I think I'm okay with, with this. I'm gonna get rid of the Dragon Claws. For the Longhorn. That's really nice, you guys. I am a very happy girl to see that. I don't know, though. Hmm. That, if this is long-term the best choice, but whatever. There's no point in just sitting here and really, whoo, that would be so nice for you. But at the same time, well, how much does, defense goes down by 20, which I don't like. And magic defense is going to also drop by 20. But this will make Harash more powerful in terms of attack. And hmm, hit rate will go up and HP goes up by 50. Maybe you could argue that's not that bad. Oh my god, you guys. This game is trolling me because I don't know what I want. I think that's the problem. It's just at the end of the day, I don't really know what I want. But okay, we're going to just, 
again, to try something new. I'm going to take that 20 dip to defense and the 20 dip to magic defense. And if it's just a huge problem and I feel like Haresh is getting his ass whooped every time enemies focus on him, then we will switch back to the ice horn. But I think this is okay. I don't think it's... It's certainly not amazing, but it's not the end of the world either, I think, to go in this direction. What would be nicer is to find more things that do bring up our defenses, but we've gotten a lot of offensive abilities. And oh my gosh, I didn't even read to you guys the description for what dropped. Let's quickly take a look at that longhorn here. And it says that it is a longhorn taken from some kind of animal, can attack the enemy from a distance. Okay. Interesting. I mean, it was a nice little upgrade, so I'm not actually mad about this drop like I've been with some of our other ones. But okie dokie, we got a whole lot of trash for those glamorous suits or glamorous armor, so we'll just spend another minute or so throwing the three jewels I think we got at folks and seeing what happens. Ah, so Medicina, I was just complaining recently, if you recall, about the fact that Lafern doesn't really have a healing ability, but now she does, so that is wonderful. We'll give this to Harush, I guess. Oh no, attack power up. Well, whatever, I guess that's the theme that we're going with now. And this just increases status, so let's see what Olivier gets from it. Attack power up as well, so not too shabby. And I think that's it. We don't have any other jewels. And although this is admittedly a little early on time, we have had longer episodes lately, so I feel okay calling it quitsies here with you guys. When we come back together, I'm trying to look at our stats here really fast with you guys in tow. Oh my god, I'm capped out on Micah. Do you guys see that? <laughs> 99,999. I mean, we never really had to spend it, so I think there was a whole lot of money bloat going on in this game. I'd even say item bloat is kind of a problem too. But anyway, so Luke is going to level definitely in our next fight. He's already at 71 experience points, so not a whole lot left. 22 for Olivier. He's at level 98. I don't know why his levels just skyrocketed so much. Haresh is definitely going to be hitting level 92 with XP currently being at 94. So that's pretty nice. And Lafern has 84 XP. So she should also be hitting level 90 in the early turns of our next fight. So I guess what we'll do, I was just, I'm waffling you guys because a part of me wants to kind of look at those three base puppets and see what I could make happen from that. But at the same time, this has to be the final dungeon or second to last area. If this itself isn't the final dungeon, I feel this is going to catapult us forward into maybe a new dimension or some other area. Maybe, I don't know, it'll be like the top of the tower or we'll be transported somewhere else and fight in a more magical arena or something against Vorlis himself to free our parents or, or something, if you guys can follow kind of what I'm saying. I just, I don't know if it's going to be worth the hour to two hour commitment for me to take a step back between this episode and episode 50 to scale up a whole new team. It's just going to suck and be so obnoxious. So you know what? I'm going to say I'm not doing it right now. I guess let's see what awaits us on the ninth floor. Fingers crossed, once again, this is the third time I've said this, but I feel like we can't have that much dungeon crawling left before we find Lolita and or Vorlis. So I guess the ball is in the game's court. I can't really change how the events are going to unfold, but we will just have to wait and witness it all together. So as always, everyone, thank you very much for watching. My name is Rabbit. This is my run of Eternal Eyes on the PlayStation 1, and I am so happy to have you guys along for the ride as we get nearer and nearer to the conclusion of this series. So take care, be good, and I'll see you in just a second in episode number 50.